With the highly anticipated Ethereum merge around the corner, what should we expect? What do we need to do as investors in Ether and any other NFTs or digital assets we have on the Ethereum network? Hello, I'm Crypto Casey, and in this video, we are going to explore what the ETH merge is, what information circulating about the merge are myths versus truth, and what risks are involved. And stick around to the very end of this video to learn what important things we need to do before the merge and after the merge. Awesome, let's learn about the Ethereum merge and what we can expect. Let's kick things off by discussing truths about the ETH merge. What is the ETH merge? The merge describes a technological event that involves a merge of the current proof of work Ethereum mainnet we use today with the proof of stake beacon chain. Proof of work is an energy intensive mining process used to verify transactions and secure the network, while proof of stake is an energy efficient validation process used to verify transactions and secure the network. So basically, the merge is simply a change of the consensus mechanism used to verify transactions and secure the network. And there are three truths we can expect from the merge. One, the ETH acronym or ticker symbol will remain ETH. Two, the proof of stake consensus layer will exponentially reduce Ethereum's energy consumption by about 99.95%, which will allow for more adoption from corporations, politicians, and big institutions that are concerned about environmental effects. And three, the merge will significantly reduce the amount of Ether in circulation, which will be mathematically equivalent to about three Bitcoin halvings. Right now, with proof of work, about 13,500 ETH enter circulation in the form of payments to miners per day which comes out to an annual inflation rate of about 4.3%. Now, with the proof of stake, the amount of Ether entering circulation will be about 1,300, which drops the annual inflation rate to about 0.3 or 0.4%. People are calling this a triple halving event because it would take Bitcoin three halving events, which happen approximately every four years to drop to that annual inflation level. And with the EIP-1559 burning upgrade that was implemented about a year ago, which involves burning or permanently removing Ether from circulation as transaction fees, when network activity is high, it's possible that Ether experiences deflation. This means as the supply of Ether decreases and the level of demand stays the same or increases, each Ether token becomes more valuable over time. Cool. When is the ETH merge? According to this tweet by Ethereum founder Vitalik Buterin, the terminal total difficulty has been set. This means the Ethereum POW network now has a roughly fixed number of hashes left to mine. Bortle predicts the merge will happen around September 15th, though the exact date depends on hash rate. At the time of this video, if everything stays on track, we are a little less than a month away. Sweet. Next, let's debunk ETH merge myths. Myth one, the merge will reduce gas fees. False. The merge is only a change of the consensus mechanism from proof of work to proof of stake. It will not expand Ethereum's network capacity and therefore will not result in lower gas fees. Myth two, the merge will increase transaction speed. False. Although there will be some slight changes to how transactions happen on the Ethereum network after the merge, the transaction speed will largely be the same as it is now on Ethereum layer one. Myth three, staked ETH can be withdrawn after the merge. False. The merge will not enable withdrawals of staked ETH. Further down Ethereum 2.0's roadmap, there is an upgrade called Shanghai that will enable staking withdrawals. Myth four, when staking withdrawals are enabled, stakers will all withdraw at once. False. After the Shanghai upgrade, there will be withdrawal limitations implemented that prevent validators from removing all their staked ETH at once to maintain the security of the network. Myth five, after the merge, staking APR will triple. False. The most recent estimations predict closer to a 50% increase in APR, not a 200% increase. Nice. Next, let's go over ETH merge risks. The current Ethereum mainnet has to and will continue to operate without really stopping. So if an issue arises during the merge, it could bring down the entire network temporarily. If this happens, developers will need to perform a restart, which isn't unusual in the space as we've seen with other platforms like Solana. But like with Solana, Ethereum going down and requiring a restart will not be great for its reputation and would likely negatively affect the price. If something goes really wrong during the merge and a restart won't resolve the issues, a worst case scenario would be the blockchain needing to be forked. 
Forking a blockchain network is the opposite of merging, which would essentially mean the merge failed. And here's another interesting wrinkle. Since Ethereum is switching from miners performing proof of work, a lot of people from the Ethereum mining community aren't exactly thrilled about it and have declared they are working on a hard fork of the current network in order to continue mining operations. This means two versions of the blockchain will exist, one proof of stake with ticker symbol ETH and the other proof of work with new ticker symbol ETHW with their own respective versions of protocols, tokens, and digital assets. And this creates two problems. One, it will divide the Ethereum community. And two, it means two versions of our NFTs and digital assets will exist, which can subject us to replay attacks. What is a replay attack? A replay attack in the case of the main version of Ethereum and its miners hard fork version of Ethereum if a transaction happens on one chain, there's a way hackers and scammers can exploit the transaction on the other chain. For example, let's say you have a CryptoPunk. Once two versions of Ethereum exist, you will have a punk on the proof of stake Ethereum blockchain and a punk on the hard forked ETHW proof of work Ethereum blockchain. Now, if you decide to list your punk on the proof of work blockchain for sale, while intending to keep the punk on the new proof of stake blockchain, someone could do a replay attack, which involves replaying the sale on the proof of stake version of Ethereum, essentially leaving you punkless. Right now, Black Hat developers are building bots in order to try to take advantage of this threat posed by the hard fork and merge. So how can we protect ourselves from replay attacks as investors? Well, this brings us to our final section what you need to do before and after the merge. Before the merge, if you are invested in Ether and any other ERC-20 tokens built on the Ethereum network, you do not need to do anything. Whether your Ether is stored on an exchange, in a hot wallet, cold wallet, ledger, BC vault, or staked on an exchange, or staked on any kind of wallet, you are good to go. During the merge, all ETH, regardless of where it is or whether or not it's staked, will be converted from ETH to ETH2 without you having to do anything. Now, if you have zero intentions of ever interacting with the ETHW hard fork blockchain version, same goes for you after the merge. If you are invested in Ether and any other ERC-20 tokens built on the Ethereum network, you do not need to do anything. After the merge, all ETH, regardless of where it is or whether or not it's staked, will be converted from ETH to ETH2 without you having to do anything. Now, if you do plan on interacting with the ETHW hard fork blockchain version, there is another step you need to take. So stay with me. If you own NFTs, listen up. Before the merge, delist any and all NFTs you may have for sale. That's it, simple enough. Now, after the merge, if you do not plan on interacting with the ETHW blockchain, you should be good to go. But if you plan on interacting with the ETHW blockchain, you need to break the link between the assets in your wallets and each blockchain with two simple steps. One, after the merge, create a new Ethereum wallet address on the ETHW blockchain and transfer all of the versions of your assets on that particular version of the blockchain to it. And two, after the merge, create a new Ethereum wallet address on the ETH proof of stake blockchain and transfer all of those versions of your assets on that particular version of the blockchain to it. Then continue using each NFT or digital asset on that respective chain only. Sure, you will need to pay some transaction fees, but it will break the line between your wallets and protect you from the possibility of a replay attack. At the end of the day, the best thing to do is refrain from interacting with the upcoming ETHW hard fork blockchain to prevent potential replay attacks from happening. Awesome. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. If you enjoyed it, please make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell notification to stay up to date on all of the latest videos. So are you excited about the Ethereum merge or a little nervous? How do you think it will affect the price? Let me know in the comments below. Be safe out there.